Thank you everyone for working on research to fight the global pandemic COVID-19. It is my pleasure to chair this session highlighting single cell research in Latin America. It's an honor to be introduced to the session speakers. Uh, note there will be a brief question and answer just as before after each presentation. Please do use Slido to submit your questions during and, and the talk and during the question and answer and I'm looking forward to reading them to our, our speakers. As our first speaker, I uh, would love to welcome Mariana, who has a PhD in bioinformatics and completed her postdoctoral work at the Gene Center at LMU in Munich, Germany. She leads the bioinformatics and computational biology lab at the Brazilian National Cancer Institute, where she conducts research focused on the interaction between tumor microenvironment and malignant cells and is starting a collaboration on single cell analysis and inflammation, where she's, she will be profiling macrophage subpopulations present in adipose cells. Um, Welcome, Mariana. Thank you so much for starting our session. Hi, good afternoon. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for this invitation. It's a pleasure for me to be here today and share a little bit of our recent work associated with microphage uh, subpopulations. Uh, microphages are a multifunctional cell type. They are present in most tissues in vertebrates and their phagocytic activity is important not only for host defense against infections but also for a variety of housekeeping functions such as removal of apoptotic cells and remodeling of uh, extra, extracellular matrix. Uh, besides their role in regulating tissue remodeling and repair, uh, microphages are also well recognized by orchestrating an inflammatory response through antigen presentation and cytokine production, recruiting and activating cells from the immune system. However, microphages are also associated with an aberrant and persistent inflammatory response. And in this case, it can lead to a tissue um, degeneration and a variety of diseases such as cancer and metabolic syndromes. Um, to exert this uh, vast, vast range of functions, um, they must present different phenotypes, which are mostly a combination of differentiation and polarization programs. The polarized phenotypes are induced by signals, leading to a stable phenotypic change um, through the induction of different gene expression programs. Um, the literature has extensively characterized two main activation states of microphages, which are the classically activated um, macrophages, named M M1, and the alternatively activated macrophages, named M2. So M1 phenotype is associated with um, antigen presentation and inflammation listing, while uh, M2 is more characterized by uh, tissue repair induction and inflammation reduction. Um, many diseases have been associated with increased number and activation of either M1 or M2 macrophages, such as the metabolic syndromes. And regarding obesity, early studies suggested that um, there is a differential polarization of adipose tissue macrophages with uh, M2-like microphages predominant in Leon, in Leon uh, adipose tissue, while M1-like microphages therefore more enriched in obese adipose tissues. Well, however, this dichotomy has been uh, questioned since recent studies show that the phenotypic plasticity of microphages is far more complicated. While several phenotypes with different functions can coexist in the adipose tissue, contributing to the development of obesity. And as far as we know, this has not been extensively explored in the literature. Um, in order to take a look in the macrophage subtypes pre 
present in the murine adipose tissue. We have analyzed single cell RNA seq data um, available in the literature from epididymal white adipose tissue samples. Um, after processing the data, we selected the clusters expressing A degree 1. I widely used a um, monocyte macrophage marker in mice. Macrophage subclusters uh, were then identified and inspected regarding the other markers depicted here in this slide. We also correlated uh, the identified subpopulations with signatures from the literature and in order to better characterize the macrophages and monocytes uh, subpopulations. Um, we observed that the five uh, ATM subtypes reflect different gene expression profiles, probably having a different function in the adipose tissue. Uh, based in this result, we concluded that a high resolution profile of myeloid derived cells associated with the adipose tissue is needed. So therefore, with the support of the Chen Zuckerberg initiative and together with my two colleagues from the University of Campinas, Marcelo Mori and Pedro Moraes Vieira, we sought to characterize the macrophage subpopulations in the adipose tissue to investigate their role in obesity. We will soon start to profile those macrophage subpopulations of lean and obese donors from both subcutaneous and visceral adipose tissue of Brazilian donors using single cell RNA seq analysis. Well, we are very excited to start this project, but while we don't have uh, any direct results to show to you uh, regarding this project, I would like to show what we have been done regarding macrophage subpopulations in the tumor microenvironment, where they have been described to exert dual functions that can either promote um, tumor progression or tumor killing. Um, in a recent work of our group, we observed that uh, metastatic melanoma samples showing um, predominant uh, unpolarized M0 signature were associated with a poor overall survival. We then decided to investigate how this microphage plasticity is also uh, impacting different tumor um, types. So therefore, we started to integrate several single-cell RNA-seq data uh, derived from both tumor and normal samples from different sites in the body. Using these markers depicted here in this slide, we were able to select the myeloid derived cells and analyze these different subpopulations and also its impact in tumor progression. Uh, so far, we were able to integrate more than 40,000 cells and identify our, uh, 20 clusters. Uh, when al analyzing genes differentially expressed, uh, we saw that the myeloid cell subpopulations present distinct gene expression profiles. And as you can see here, the, uh, each cluster uh, comprises a different number of cells, with the smallest one uh, comprising uh, around 250 cells. Uh, the cells in each cluster also express a similar number of transcripts, with some exceptions for cluster 3, for example. Um, with these results, we were able to identify tumor or normal tissues, specific myeloid cells, uh, pointed here by those arrows. Also, subpopulations that were more predominant in specific sites, such as lung, represented here in, by the green bar bars, or skin, represented here by the purple bars. Uh, when evaluating the subpopulation's heterogeneity by tissue type, 
uh, melanoma was the most diverse sample in terms of different cell subtypes, while the healthy um, skin tissue showed only a few subpopulations. In order to better characterize each cluster, we did a correlation with known signatures. We have identified interesting um, subpopulations such as the cluster 2, which shows a high correlation with the unpolarized uh, M0 microphage phenotype that has been only characterized in vitro so far. While these clusters were predominant found in the tumor samples, and it expressed some important uh, and already associated uh, genes, uh, 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 genes associated with tumor progression, such as SPP1, also Marco, and STSB, corroborating uh, some of our previous results published uh, this year regarding metastatic melanoma. We also found a cluster with no correlation with the evaluated signatures that express TBS AB1, suggesting a potential new macrophage subtype, but new analyses are needed in order to better characterize these cells. Well, although very preliminary, we are very excited about our recent results. So, in conclusion, I want to reinforce the important role of microphates associated with host defense, tissue development, homeostasis and repair, but also its crucial role in the activation of basal chronic inflammation, leading to the development of diseases as we saw, um, such as cancer and obesity. There are plenty of microphage phenotypes to be better investigated and we believe that the high resolution characterization of their unique um, plasticity can help the development of new immunotherapeutic uh, strategies. So with that, I would like to thank my entire team and also my collaborators, especially the ones highlighted here, who contributed directly to the results showed here. Also, I would like to thank the funding agencies. And last but not least, uh, we are seeking for a postdoc candidate to work in this project. So if you are interested, please email me to have more uh, info on that. And I would be glad to take your questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mariana. Um, and, and thank you everyone who is sending questions in through Slido. Um, thank you. Uh, so um, as those questions are, are coming in, um, we do have one. Uh, they indicate a great talk there. Uh, how, how many additional subsets of macrophages do you expect to find when you start doing single cell RNA seq uh, M0 to M300? <laughs> question mark. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, great question. Uh, actually, when we started this work, we have no idea of how many subtypes we could actually found. Uh, actually, it was a surprise that we could found uh, at least 20 uh, different subtypes. And I think um, like the, um, the secret here is that as uh, when we enhance the number of um, data that we are evaluating, then we can discover uh, new um, subpopulations. So I believe that if we keep enhancing the, the amount of data, uh, we can further discover much more subtypes. Makes a lot of sense. Um, so I was wondering a little bit about the the ongoing, I guess, work on the high resolution data set. Um, I know, um, at least from my perspective, Brazil has a, a really wonderful diversity of population. So how how do you approach that when you're wanting to do this high resolution Brazilian population uh, uh, overview? Okay. Um, so. Well, the way we designed the project, it's going to be like at least three phases. So the first one, we want to at least determine um, these um, subpopulations. And because 
this, this kind of experiment, it's a little bit um, expensive, let's say the, in this way. It's not possible to profile many, many people in this first um, search. So what we want to do is to discover very like re reliable markers. And then in a second phase, stage we can profile more people in our population in order to better um, tackle this ethnic uh, issue you know so in the first phase we are gonna um, profile around 12 donors if I'm not wrong we had some uh, both um, male and female donors but I believe that we are gonna uh, enhance this knowledge in the second stage when we are gonna use um, book RNA seq to better characterize their their um, signatures. Thank you. Um, and there's a, another question that came up. I think it's a, related to this. You may have answered it partially. So we go ahead and knock this one out. Uh, this is a really cool work. Congratulations. Just one question. Regarding the study in uh, Brazilians you're starting, do you anticipate differences in gene expression depending upon ancestry? And uh, we are new to these studies, but very interested in the value of incorporating individuals from different places. So. Yeah, this is a great question. We actually right now are relying on data sets that are already available in the literature. So for sure we need to include um, data sets from all around the world and then try to, to tackle this issue. I think it's a great question and we have to, to think about that, but we haven't, um, you know, um, touched it in this subject so far mainly because of the, the data sets we have right now. But it's like paramount to, to think about this and also to better um, planning the, the future experiments. Another one, uh, are, there, are, are these M0 macrophages in the tumor resident-like macrophages? No, actually uh, they are, from, well, we need to characterize them better, but our guessing is that they are, derived from myeloid cells, so they are recruited ones. And I don't know, my hypothesis is that there is something like hampering their polarization. So, but this is just a guessing, we need to, to, stand, to stand them more because they haven't been characterized uh, in vitro so far, only in vitro. Thank you. And uh, we, you had so many questions coming in, so much excitement oh, just... on your work. So when, <laughs> but we'll have time for one last one. Uh, uh, do these different uh, phenotypes, uh, phenotypes simply represent different stages of monocyte-derived macrophage once they enter the tissue and the amount of time they were in the tissue? Yeah, this is what we believe. Um, we are performing right now some um, pseudo time analysis. I think this is going to also help us to, to answer this question because then we can, you know, um, kind of... Um, better understand the plasticity of the cells. But um, some, because we are also analyzing um, normal tissues, uh, we are also um, discovering also resident microphase. So there are both um, types of cells there, the, the recruited one and, and also the resident ones. But it's very nice to see that depends on the site of we are analyzing, there is a, a more specific um, cell type. Well, thank you, Mariana. I would encourage others that had questions to please reach out to Mariana. Um, we'll, ha we'll have to move on to our next talk. Thank you so much. Thank you.